<laughs> Let's play! Whoa! Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. You all may call me Pharaoh, and welcome back to Let's Play 13 Sentinels. Last time we left off, we went through and completed the stories of Sekigahara and Muria. Which I never say his name correctly, but screw it. Uh, so yeah, well, it was a lot of good information. Kind of found out the whole idea of like his consciousness being in BJ, why it happened, how it happened, etc. And kind of like what Sekigahara was doing, and why he like why he did what he did. Um, his original self being an assassin and whatnot, and like the whole thing with the messaging uh, service and how Ch Chihiro was actually killed and whatnot. So yeah, there was all that. Now, finally, we can actually go back into Goto's story, which we only did his prologue. And considering that we needed to know all these plot reveals and revelations to even open up his story again, it's pretty much telling me that his story, his timeline is going to be, I would assume, insane. Oh. So, I guess we just sit back and relax. Uh, I'm not sure how long this is going to go for, because Hijiyama also, he has, like, I think one thing left, but we had to do Renny and Goto's hypocrisy event. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, just as a recap, where we last left off with him, he continues to seek the truth. While in the UFO, he discovered footage of an elderly version of himself, which I believe is he was now the uh, CEO of um, the bad company. I forgot their names already. I think it starts with an S. I was like Shikishima. Is that is that right? I don't know. It would appear I can no longer rely on Shikishima. I was right. So wait, this is Shikishima Industries, like right next to the. Uh, isn't this right next to the the bridge or the overpass? Miss Murimura's death has left the Shikishima execs in disarray. Now they won't let me spearhead the Sentinel Project, as if I'm just a child. I doubt my opinion will weigh much in their discussions going forward. Now, I was going to say, like, well, aren't you technically, I mean, I want to say a child, but, you know, you are a teenager in their eyes. Granted, you know, of course, you know, you are an adult, I'm assuming you transferred your consciousness or whatever into this body, whatever. But yeah, they're not gonna listen to whatever the hell you have to say. Miss Morimura, why did you have to die? Didn't you order it? Or am I mistaken about that? I I don't know. Where the hell do I go now? To the left? Yeah, to the left. Okay, so okay. So we were on the left side before, now this is the right side. Okay. Is that easy to get a taxi in Japan? Apparently so. He just didn't have his Uber app installed. Let's get in. I am a park, please. I miss the days when those fares were like super cheap. Now, especially like, especially now, jeez, these fares are ridiculous. Something that would have taken me maybe like ten or fifteen dollars to get someplace is easily double, triple that. And it's like, well, looks like I ain't gonna go to a certain, you know, certain place, whatever, you know. If that's my way of, tra you know, transportation, you know, whatever, but, uh, still. That was pretty quick, Goto-kun. I checked the corpse at the police station. It was yours, Miss Morimura. There's no doubt about it. Is that so? You don't seem too shocked about your death. Well, it didn't exactly stop me. Here I am, safe and sound. I suppose that's true. And I guess we know damn well she's not gonna tell him that I, I killed the, my other version self, whatever. Ever since the battle that... <laughs> so, what did the police say? The cause of death was a gunshot to the abdominal area. No bullet was found in the body. 
Though it's easy to imagine why. The murder weapon was likely from beyond this time, beyond material bullets. Estimated time of death is approximately 1900 hours. You were witnessed running off somewhere with a short-haired student. According to a pedestrian's eyewitness account, anyway. They found a witness. This era's police really did their due diligence. There should have been that drone tracking her movement. So, anything helpful in its footage? The timing couldn't have been worse. It looks like it was monitoring the government's movement at the time. So she wasn't even under surveillance. I see. Any thoughts as to our primary suspect? Wow, you're just trying to steer everything away from yourself. And I get it. I think anybody would do the same damn thing. She's slick. Who do you think did it? Well... An acquaintance of Miss Morimura. Described as a short-haired male in a student uniform. Most likely A. Sekigahara. The witness statement matches the description of A. Sekigahara. It did seem like something was wrong with A. Sekigahara's memories. I wouldn't be surprised if he was our murderer. Though it raises the question of why he'd bother to lure her out. Surely a murderer's optimal scenario is to avoid being spotted at all. Well, maybe it wasn't premeditated. He could have killed her by accident. Well, he certainly is the type to brood over things. I can say he's not enough of an idiot to shoot someone on impulse. Who else could it be? That man with that... call sign? Some numerical name. Logically speaking, he would naturally be another potential suspect. He did attempt to eradicate all the compatibles. He's a dangerous individual, and he's still at large. All that's left of 426 is his consciousness. I don't think I could reliably predict his behavior. He's desperate enough to do anything. Right, but at this point, where is his consciousness? Isn't it still... Because I know it was in Tomy's android body, and then when Tomy's android body and... Uh, oh my god, Aiba. Well, not really Aiba, but you know who I'm talking about. Like, their android bodies, they they flipped and... Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm trying to remember, but it's like... My mind's going all over the damn place. 426 certainly isn't above killing. If Ida-san were here, I'm sure he'd declare 426 our primary suspect. We know he killed at least four people. That's why I shot him dead in the end. If he resurrected himself as an android, maybe... That would give him a chance at revenge. As a motive, it sounds pretty clear-cut. Aside from Miss Morimura and Ida-san, four others came here for refuge 16 years ago. By the time I'd started assisting Miss Morimura's efforts, they'd already lost their physical bodies. Fortunately, we were able to use the data stored in Sector Zero. This allowed us to meld their replicated consciousness with AI. As for how they lost their bodies in the first place, reportedly 426 is doing. He destroyed them all in one fell swoop. According to Ida-san's account, anyway. But if number 16 is to be believed, that's not what really happened. And Miss Morimura should be aware of that. I spoke with the pilot of Sentinel number 16. Back then, she gave Miss Morimura something nobody else would. The truth. failed. So we decided to stick to the plan. We all headed to the gate to escape. But there was an explosion while we were shifting. From what I can tell, 
The Type 98 we were shifting in got attacked. But that's the last thing I remember. After that, nothing. But that means... Is that how your data was damaged? It wasn't some plot by 426 after all? Just... an explosion? We never did manage to completely reconstruct your data. I thought it was just that you didn't get converted in time, but... You were... You were all dead before the shift even happened. Itakun, you said he killed the four of them. I know you did. You said he sabotaged them, killed them. Given the chance, he certainly would have. You lied to me? He already tried to kill us all in the past. You know he'd have tried again if we left him alive. Killing him was the right call. No. That means... I... So I guess that brings up a pretty good ethical dilemma situation here. Just because somebody did something terrible in the past, are we to assume they would do the same again later on? Are they not worthy of redemption? Um, I feel like the... I hate saying the correct answer, but, I mean, because it's everybody's perspective here, you know, but I would feel like, you know, okay, everybody deserves a second chance, whatever, you know, but let's also be frank here. That's really, that's a really hard pill to swallow, especially depending on what act was committed previously and what the hell, what were they capable of? So, if 426 really did try killing people before, and now they're they're pinning this supposedly accidental explosion on him. Yeah, I mean, it's not right. But I feel like if he really didn't do it, <laughs> I was going to say, like, maybe could have put in more of an effort to tell them, like, this wasn't me, I didn't do it. Because from what I recall, I don't remember him ever really fighting against it. Um, but I could be wrong. I mean... I don't know why. I guess it's hard for me to, like, really stick with the story. Then again, I've been playing this game on and off for many months, you know, which is not something you're going to typically do as you play a game, you know? Like, if I was a, if I was streaming all the time or, like, this was, a like, my job or I do this every day, yeah, sure, I, I can probably get the story down pat, no problem. For somebody who's very busy... <laughs> I can only record whenever I really have the time, which is not really enough. Uh, yeah, my information is going to be like bits and pieces everywhere. He did it. So you believe 426 is the most likely suspect? Barring A. Sekigahara, who else could it be? Miss Morimura. I have one more question. What is it? Regarding 426, would you say you had any particular feelings toward him? Feelings? Well, he was certainly a good friend. I felt like he really understood me. Well, used to, anyway. Where's this coming from? That doesn't make sense. According to number 18, or should I say, Tamao-san? I had a hunch about Miss Morimura's feelings, and my discussion with Tamao-san only confirmed my suspicions. Well, this is getting interesting. Where the hell is he gonna? What is he gonna recall here exactly? So, what the hell's going on with Chihiro here? Kotokun, I'm sorry for this. I know it's sudden. I need to talk to you. Did something happen? It's about Morimura-san. 
She's been transplanting 426's memories onto Jurokun. I only just found out. 426? As in the escaped android? No, not that one. She's using the memory data of the man himself. It was saved during the shift. In other words, she's trying to use Juro to create another 426? I did my best to talk her down. She's letting me handle Juokun's treatment now. Still, I don't think she's given up on this. Why is she trying to bring back 426? Well, I've been giving her some advice about it. And I understand where she's coming from, but... Uh, Mori Morrison is in love with him. <sighs> with 426? Maybe she always has been. That's why she wants him back as a human. But she has to know the risks. He's a dangerous man. True, but that's not exactly what she's remembering. Besides, she's the one who killed him. That guilt is still eating at her. Oh. Watch over Mori Morrison. And try to keep her away from Juokun if you can. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. I can barely take the idea of one 426, let alone two. <sighs> that definitely seems like a problem. I mean, I feel like we're going back and forth on 426's capabilities or is he really evil or not, but... Him being in the android body made him sound pretty damn evil, right? So, what's going on? Like, I feel like I'm gonna need a recap on a lot of this stuff, but... So I was right. Miss Morimura did have feelings for someone. Everybody has feelings for somebody in this game. Like, I wouldn't be surprised at all. When Juro Izumi lost his memories... You aim to use him to revive 426. Make one a vessel for the other. <laughs> one reason seems most likely. You harbored romantic feelings for him. Me? <laughs> With him? You're joking. That Chihiro Morimura was mind-hacked, remember? You said so yourself? My goodness, romantic feelings? For him? <laughs> no, God, no. Not my cup of tea. I'd like to revisit something you just mentioned. About 426 killing at least four individuals. Do you really not remember? Remember what? You've read my files, I presume? I gathered quite a lot of material in the past. Most of it is rather outdated, including Ida-san's statement concerning those victims. In other words, your answer is objectively incorrect. Really? Well, can you blame me? Look at this body I'm stuck with. I'm bound to have some memories confused. If you have some comment on this form, then by all means. No. That's not what I meant. If you recall, I suggested that Miss Morimura was mind-hacked. That idea was based on a certain piece of evidence I found. One particular log. What log? If you really are Miss Morimura, then you should already know. Two years before you were born, Ida-san extracted some information from 426 that in turn led to the discovery of the data log in question. So, why again does this matter? You're about to find out. As for the log itself, it contains footage from the year 2188. It was found buried in the mainframe data during the analysis of 426. 
You seem very disturbed by me seeing that file. So much so, in fact, that you ended up deleting all of your logs. Would you mind telling me why you did that? I don't know. I don't remember. Well, at the very least, its contents suggested a connection to 426. Or even that he had been manipulating Miss Morimura. The log contained a very interesting report. Apparently, Juro Izumi downloaded memories onto Chihiro Morimura's clone. 426 was the one who overwrote my memories? So what does that mean? What are you trying to say? Your Morimura and I are both 426? I'm really trying to follow along, but I think I'm losing it here and there. This is Tetsuya Ida. Don't know why I'm recording this. Nobody's going to hear it. Still, might as well. Not like I have anywhere else to share this. I was in the middle of a routine bug regression test, and I noticed part of the final phase had been altered. The change was made in Chihiro Morimura's host. The setting change looks like it'll trigger a memory overwrite. I don't know anything about the memory's contents, but it says the modifying user was Juro Izumi. Because someone thought it'd be a great idea to give that guy senior admin ID. And at this point, what the hell can we do about it? At least now I have proof. You're all hypocrites anyway. Yes, including you, jackass. So who even cares anymore? None of this matters. We're all dead anyway. <sighs> and now that I recall, isn't Jero, isn't he, didn't we find out like he was like a general or something? Lieutenant something? The log inconveniently revealed one of your secrets. One you were desperate to keep me away from. So you deleted it. That's my theory, anyway. Remember where this all began? It was the compatibility experiment. The one that produced you. Based off Miss Morimura's footage and your own admissions, I've completely misjudged the situation. All this time, I believed you were her. But even from the very beginning, you've been your own person. So, what are you saying? I'm not Chihiro Morimura? If I'm not a duplicate of Chihiro Morimura, then who exactly do you think I am? Yeah, I'm very confused now. Like, <laughs> I wish to God I can follow this. I'm glad some of my theories were pretty much, you know... I hit the nail on the head, but when it comes to so, some details like this, I'm like, huh? You are Chihiro Morimura. Well, there you have it. No, not Miss Morimura, the teacher. Professor Chihiro Morimura. The one from the year 2188. And the central figure of Shikishima's interstellar development project. Wait, I, I thought that... Was that not the case? I thought we always assumed that it was the original Morimura. No, wait. Oh, wait a minute. I think that she did say that she was a duplicate of the Morimura here. And I think I forgot that, and I just automatically assumed that, oh, it's the original one. So I... It's like I got to the right answer use... <laughs> I got to the right answer using wrong logic or using like a wrong method kind of like when you're like solving a math problem and you get the right answer but the way you did the work was like what the hell are you talking about but it still ended up working maybe that's not a good analogy but still so okay yeah so based on the logs we found he deduced that she's actually professor shihiro munimura which i would assume is I keep calling them the original, right? Like, the ones from 2188, those are, like, the original people. And then they all died in one capacity or another, and here we are again. 
looped, I guess. Well, back into his story. I'm not sure when how we're gonna get to that hypocrisy event to continue Hijiyama's story, but still. Aegis activation confirmed. The terminal is completely sealed off. We did it. They've changed targets. The next terminal is just over there. They're already on the move. Can't even let us catch our breath, huh? I haven't hit my operating limit yet, but I'm going to dismount. Whoa, hey, then who's taking point? Pull it together. We don't need orders to kick some ass. Oh, geez, I was waiting for, like, you know, is there something else going to happen? It's like, no, I'm just standing here. Everybody's running away. You know, so I guess maybe, and this is me thinking more into this. This is a sector, right? This is really... <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. That guy running. But, you know, this is after the year 2188, and everybody, you know, they, they placed them there, which I assume they're, like, clones, consciousness swapped, whatever. So what about all these individuals? Is it the same thing? Like, I highly doubt these are all, like, original inhabitants from the space colonies from 2188 and before, right? Didn't I see... Are these guys making a circle? I just saw your twin brother. <laughs> this is... Okay, I guess I should continue. chihiro son. Look at that sunset. Just like it was back then. It's beautiful. I'm guessing you were monitoring me with a drone? I have one locked on to you, yes. Their targets changed. They're coming back this way. It's dangerous here. We need to get you to safety. Aw, don't tell me you're worried about me. How about you mind your own business? You already know how I feel. This is what I wanted. Still... More importantly, can you really afford to waste your time here? Or have you already given up? The invasion is still in its preliminary phase. I've got time. First, I need to get you somewhere safe. There are no safe places left. <sighs> At least, none left for us. We're not safe anywhere. But you know that well enough. You're just losing precious time. Go focus on the job you're supposed to be doing. <sighs> Understood. I'll go. You'll find it safer towards the river. If, hypothetically, you wanted to know. Wait. As long as we're both here, there's something I want to clear up. So, tell me. You were in love with Miss Morimura, weren't you? <sighs> you said she was mind-hacked. But it was more about you being jealous, wasn't it? That's hardly... This may be our last chance to talk. Answer me. I mean, isn't this a little awkward to talk... talk about this to... the Professor Chihiro Mor Morimura? But granted, it wasn't the actual Professor, but it was like an instance of Morimura, right? Which I guess, you know, I, I, I'm i not surprised that the game's delving into this. I mean, it seems like everyone else has some type of love interest going on, and we learned nothing from Goto. So it's like, 
Come on, buddy. Everybody has somebody they like. What about you? You are correct. Is that what you wanted to hear? That I was driven by some cheap, naive impulse? That I... that I can't think about anything else? And that's why you brought back my memory, too. Isn't it? <sighs> you never cared how you managed to do it. You just wanted her back. So much. I'm glad. You really were a slave to your desires. That's the Renya Goto I remember. It means... I don't have to like you after all. Thank you. I think that's all I wanted to hear. Professor, I... You should go. After all, we still have our bet. Although it looks like I'm about to win it. Wow. He was completely smitten by her. Okay. I hate that he calls it a cheap, naive impulse or feeling. I mean, I know some people may view love or any emotion as like, oh, it's whatever, you know, but it's like, I feel it's a big part of life, isn't it? Anyway, enough of getting mushy. Let's activate our sentinel. I mean, that was adorable. Miwa needs to be freaking just... She needs to be protected. Like, I, uh... I think that would have been interesting if she was one of, like, the main, main characters, but as a side character, she's pretty damn awesome. Uh, so that was the four survival instance. Uh, the battle's begun. Goto worried, was worried for Chihiro. But she ignored his warnings. When she confirmed the feelings he had towards Munimura, she joined Miwako and Tomi to evacuate. Now we still have about 20-something more minutes. Well, it's pretty late and I need to get some rest, but uh, 20 minutes isn't, isn't going to hurt too bad. <clears throat> Let's continue just a little bit more of his story. Um, take it from there. I know this is my first time here, but this suddenly makes me feel so... nostalgic. Sunsets will do that, I find, regardless of time period. Yes, but... this must be... well, I suppose it must be one of those places. So? Where am I going? I've rented an apartment under a false name. 
can't be any worse than our last accommodations. As long as it's not rubble, I'll take it. My apologies. If it's any comfort, I'm certain nobody will find you there. Not Shikishima, and certainly not Miss Morimura. I suppose we have Ida-san to thank for all this. The funds and paperwork he prepared were invaluable. Tetsuya Ida. And he's still missing, is he? Yes. Let's go. Chihiro-san. <sighs> you think I'm the professor? That is what I said. You were Professor Chihiro Morimura, a major figure in Shikishima in the year 2188, namely the leader of its space initiative. What are you even talking about? Just some hypotheticals. A possible interpretation of the evidence I found. Okay, say I am the professor. Remember, Miss Morimura is the one who created me. You think that was her plan? She wanted a host for the professor and not herself? How would that make sense? Miss Morimura ran an experiment to grant her clone compatibility. She believed that you were synchronized to her. She believed it was her own data she transmitted. But it was the other Chihiro Morimura in Sector Zero. And of course, you entered the world as a newborn. Incapable of verbal communication. So Miss Morimura never realized her mistake. This is all speculation. Certainly, yes. Do they not, like, name these data files I mean for from myself I'm pretty huge when it comes to naming conventions and standardized procedures when it comes to work I know I sound like a damn nerd but it, it just makes life so much easier when you are trying to get a bunch of things done when you have a standardized process when you have a standard naming convention in place for whatever the hell you're working on you can find whatever you need in a matter of seconds compared to you just choose whatever name you think is coherent or you think it makes sense when you have hundreds or thousands or even millions of files to go through it's just, yeah <laughs> I say that now because like I'm, I'm in the middle of a pretty somewhat major project at work and like we're just kind of starting the design process like we've been at it for the past eh, maybe like two or three weeks at this point and um it's gonna go on for quite a while you know like in any corporation there's design and there's building and there's implementation and testing and regression testing and uh test cases and going back and forth and oh man it's it's fun it's fun yeah. but if i'm right and you are the professor. I imagine you were in quite a panic yourself. All things considered, it was a staggering deviation from the original plan. What original plan? Among the logs from 2188, one of Tetsuya Ida's noted that he'd found an anomaly. Chihiro Morimura was set to undergo a memory transplant in the final phase, and the final phase, well, that would be us. I don't know where you think you're going with this. A bit of patience, please. There's a little more context I need to provide. The log from the future I saw first. That would be the comms log I found with my own ID. The first log I checked held some surprises. The author seemed to be an elderly Renya Goto. And the date of recording appeared to be 2188. I assumed 
It was some future version of myself. One that had time traveled into the far future. But now, I don't think that's the case. I believe it's the other way around. In other words, I myself am a clone of him. <sighs> Every individual I saw in that log footage, they all created clones of themselves. Clones, huh? I did find a log that proves this point. What did you see? A comms log between you and Professor Takamiya. Her field is genetic engineering, I note. You know, I find it interesting that Yuki went into genetic engineering. I mean, I hate judging a book by its cover, you know, but uh, that wouldn't be the first thing to come, come to mind that Yuki would be doing with her future, you know. But, you know, everybody, it, it's, it's kind of what I like about, you know, I don't, I don't even know what you even want to call it, but... Everybody contains surprises, you know? You know. That's why you never want to make assumptions and like people that you think would do something and they do something completely different. I don't know. To me, it's intriguing. Um, I know, like one of my one of my buddies back from high school. Yeah, we we tried keeping up here and there, like Facebook and all that, but still, um, like back then, like oh yeah, he he enjoyed school, everything like that. You look at him, you never would have thought that he absolutely loved anything aquatic. Anything like, you know, um, like having to do marine biology. Never in a million years. But, yeah, you ask him about like various types of fish and various aquariums, how to set them up and what, how to take care of them and things like that. He was an expert. Um,. And that's what he wanted to do, uh, you know, after ha after school and all that. And I don't know if he if he ever pursued it or not, to be quite frank, you know. But I just always kind of liked it with people that did. They just have these, you know, interests and passions that I, I hate saying it doesn't fit the mold of what this person is. But it, once again, it just kind of goes back to that, like everybody 
is amazing at something, you know? There were 15 survivors of that colony, each with a clone established to be compatible. Though they grew up in different eras, different worlds. And you, you aimed to replace your clone's memories with your own. That was your real plan. So it was their sole purpose just to have clones, not to do anything with their memories or anything like that, just to have clones, period? Because it was my assumption that... I was kind of going on a basis of mind swapping, or in the, in the, in the sense of, like, continuing life through another body. Now, if that meant creating a clone and then implanting, implanting your memories into them... Well, see, I guess that's a, it's a little weird. Like, clone... Because that... I guess that's like a, it's a literal definition, right? Like, it's a copy of whatever original being it was, but they still have their own... I, I would assume, right? Consciousness, their own feelings, their memories, etc. It has nothing to do with transplanting one thing from another. Yeah, I don't know, like, I've talked about this, like, dilemma before, this ethical situation where the idea of, like, cloning, the idea of passing your consciousness or your memories onto another being, what does that say about people's spiritual beliefs or lack of, uh... And what I mean is, like, you know, you obviously you have many people who, you know, believe in some aspect of an afterlife. Uh, then you have others who believe in eternal ob oblivion. And then you got people I think we're kind of like in between. I, I feel like... Does this, like, cloning and mind swapping and, and transferring mind and consciousness... I feel like it, like it kind of brings the whole point, like it's like a moot, a, a, a moot point. I don't know. I, I guess it's for me it's interesting because you know personally, yeah, I I, I consider myself a, um, you know, I hate saying spiritual, but you know, like religious in a sense. You know, like I I have my own religious beliefs. Um, you know, of course, I'm not gonna, you know push it to anybody else, you know, we, we all want to believe what we want to believe in. That's what makes us great. But thinking of, like, stuff like this, like, it's, I, like I guess it maybe it forms a weird uh, complexity to it. Or, you know, I think I'm just thinking way too damn much into this, you know? But I, I like going to these discussions. Because I, I like to hear what others have to say about it. I don't know. Right now, I imagine your biggest question is precisely how much of that log I've seen. Am I close? You do have a genius mind, but also the form of a child. I imagine it's harder than usual to hide your agitation. It's absolutely not... <laughs> now you're just trying to trick me? I'd say, based on that log, Professors Takamiya and Morimura seem to know each other quite well. Maybe you'd know something about that. Of course not. Then perhaps instead, Sukasa Okino? <sighs> Being compatible, that makes one part of his identity clear. He's one of the 15 from the year 2188. So, any theories? Who was he in the year 2188? Uh, Care to guess? Stop it. No? Then allow me to clarify. That boy, Tsukasa Okino, is Professor Chihiro Morimura's son. But not her child by personal conventional birth. The professor donated her egg cells as a young woman, in accordance with the policies on population control. 
Where the hell did that come from? What? It, what? Like, I feel that... Why do I feel that it just came out of left field? Like, nowhere, in my opinion, did this game talk about the possibility of... Oh, you know... Being related to anybody here. Like, what? Oh, man. Oh, pfft. Maybe my mind is the only one that's blown. Maybe you guys knew, but it's like, huh? No comment at this time. Their blood relation wasn't exactly obvious. Until DNA testing on the clone revealed it. The professor was faced with the truth. He was her son. Which, naturally, sparked an inconvenient surge of maternal instinct. <clears throat> However, Okino himself didn't think highly of the Professor. He had his disagreements with the project staff, too. When it seemed like her end was near, the Professor recorded him one final message. One last chance for him to know the truth. Oh, stop! You saw that? But how? You'd need a biometric ID match to access that log. So you should only have been able to access your own. My logs and Okinos should have been locked off. Thank you, Professor Morimura. Uh, uh. Really? We're just gonna let her run off? You're not gonna get far. Well, holy crap, what a reveal. Like, where- I just- I still feel like it came out of nowhere. Indeed. The files I could access were somewhat limited. Mostly company logs. Meeting reports, call transcripts, bureaucratic chaff. Barely anything in the way of your personal records. <sighs> then, how do you know what was in my logs? It's simple, really. That should do it for preparations. Now, let's see if the biometric authentication works. Did it go through? Looks like that got me past the initial barrier, at least. Now, with Miss Murimura's ID, I should be able to get into her logs. I was gonna say, like, where the hell is she? I I was she just freaking passed out here the entire time? Maybe, if I check Miss Murimura's logs... I might find a clue why your biometric ID matches hers. She proved very helpful. She is Chihiro Morimura, a compatible version. If you really are Miss Morimura, then you should already know who Iori Fuyasaka is. Because that would mean you hid her here in Sector 4. The plan was for the two newborns to grow up with their own separate lives. Ida-san's idea, presumably. Chihiro Morimura was planned to be placed in 2104, and Tetsuya Ida in 2024, yet neither could be found. I knew Renya Goto of Shikishima pretty well. You and he are very different. Except that you both make my life a lot harder. So, 
Suppose I am the professor. Then what? I want to know the truth. I want to know the reasons behind all of this. But that seems unlikely. I imagine you're not inclined to tell me anything. And why's that? It'd be inconvenient for you if we had all the facts. Considering you're trying to eliminate us. <sighs> From the very beginning, you never intended for this world to survive. Which I still really don't understand, like, why? Like, I know she had, like, the whole Operation Aegis to stop the looping, but it's like, if they do that, then they're doomed, and there's no more Sector Zero, then I... Like, I I'm trying to figure out, like, who is the super bad person in this game? Or is, like, a little mixture of everybody? I don't know. Like, I, I have to, like... I feel like this game's kind of like Kingdom Hearts, where it seems convoluted as hell, but then it's like you just sit down and just, you know, pay attention. It's not bad at all. Granted, this is nowhere near as bad as Kingdom Hearts. I mean, that's multiple games, multiple, you know, uh, generations of consoles, all that stuff. Here, it's just one game. Yeah, it's just, just go through, like, the timeline. Boom, you're fine. <laughs> but still... I think I think it's mainly because um Oh what the shit is that? <laughs> uh I was gonna say like it's mainly because like I've been playing this game like on and off, you know. That's why you know it is what it is. So wait a minute. I can't even continue of anybody's story anymore. Well then yeah, we, we have to go up to at least wave five of the third area before we can continue with his story. And then we still, because we haven't even gotten to the hypocrisy event to finish off, finish off Hijiyama's. So. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting to do that, but I guess in the next episode, we are going to be diving back into the destruction portion of the game. And, you know, <laughs> I kind of forgot how to play this. So this should be fun. I, I want to say it's going to be a lot easier now because, um, you know, I did some grinding off screen. I think I showed you guys in the last episode. But, uh, you know, basically, I whatever things I use a lot for users, uh, what I use a lot for yeah, various uh, yeah characters, I maxed it out. Like, for, like, the Gen 4 people, I use the multi-lock missiles and the leg spikes a lot, you know? Um, or if, like, Gen 1 users freaking demolish your blade. And I wish other people had this hyper condenser as well, but, uh, for Gen 1, I think it's literally only Ogata. But, you know, he uses it a lot. Uh, actually, did I upgrade you at all? No. I probably should give him plus eight here or something, you know? Uh, same thing with you. Um, maybe the Anagrime missiles, just to give him something else going on. I gave him plus eight for the multi-rocket launchers. And the Plasma Arc Fusion Cutter. Now, these things, granted, they take up a crap ton of EP, but holy crap. I These things, in my opinion, I think hit harder than the Demolisher Blades. That's what it seems like anyway. So... Yeah, like, the, I think they have it. I think she does too. There you go. Uh, you know, I never really, u like, liked using Shinome a lot. But I'll probably give her something. Uh, these long-range missiles are fun to use. I uh, know, what was the other one? Not missile rain. There's another one. It's like it's a huge one. I think I think Yamuria and Kisaragi have it. Which one is it? Oh, here it is. The super large missile. Holy crap! This thing. Well, first off, take a look at how much EP the thing uses. 750. Like it says, it fires off a powerful missile at a long distance, can decimate a wide area. They are not kidding. Like 
if you're like surrounded or you have a bunch of things happening one little area, like in an area, you use this thing, they're gone. Like, I, I don't think I've yet to see something actually survive these. So, oh, he has plus eight. I only have plus five for her, but so that's that's why I whatever thing I think they're going to use a lot, like these long range missiles, I'll probably upgrade that to plus eight or max it out fully. So that's kind of what, what I may be doing. I mean, 318,000 points. Actually, I do want to get that trophy for unlocking all the terminal enhancements. So I might do that next time. And there is one to get the rest of the, like, like uh, if you want to say ar armaments or arms for everybody. So I think I'm going to have enough points to do all that. I mean, I may not have enough to actually upgrade people, but I think we're going to do just fine moving into the next, um, the next uh, destruction section, in my opinion. So... Uh, this should be a lot of fun. Maybe I can I can put it up to like extreme or hard, whatever, to kind of compensate the difficulty. But frankly, I just want to enjoy myself. So that's that. But that's all going to be in the next episode, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be it for me today. So, as usual, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time for Let's Play Thirteen Sentinels. Love you all so much, and don't forget to spread that love around. Have a great day.